Stop 4. Trade and Exchange. Fossbridge, Fosgate. You may think that before the development of fast motorised transport and refrigeration, most people ate only what they grew themselves or could obtain near where they lived. But residents of Ibarakum, an integral part of a trading network extending throughout Europe, Asia and Africa, had access to many kinds of goods from all over the world. Popular Samian pottery, found in great quantities in excavations in Roman York, was shipped to this area from France, known in Roman times as Gaul. People in Abarakum ate both local grains, meat and dairy products, and many kinds of food not grown in Britain. Three important items of most people's everyday diet, wine, olive oil and fish sauce, were shipped to Ibarakum from their places of origin thousands of miles away. Vineyards were planted in England as far north as Lincoln in Roman times, but most of the wine people drank was made in the Rhone Valley. Olive oil was produced in southern Spain, known in Roman times as Hispania, and fish sauce, or garum, was made in large factories along the Mediterranean coast. An excavation in York found the bones of dormice native to Gaul, possibly not the same species as the dormice wealthy Romans dined on, but tastier than native rodents. These foods arrived in Ibarakum in clay pots up to six feet tall called amphorae, in the hulls of ships sailing across the North Sea, up the English coast, and then up the River Ouse and the River Foss, which you are standing over now. Up the river from this point, across from the Red Tower, is Hungate, where excavations in the 1950s revealed an extensive harbour with channels for ships and stone bases that supported the cranes that loaded and unloaded the ships. Today, the foss is no longer used for shipping, but in Roman times, the harbour at Hungate was alive with boat traffic connecting the interior of Britannia to the rest of the empire. Wholesale merchants transported the amphorae to their shops and emptied the contents into smaller clay jars for people to purchase. Many of these large amphorae couldn't be reused as the food residue in them would become rancid, so when empty they were broken and disposed of. Pieces of amphora are often found in excavations in and around York as well as all over the Roman world, and some can be seen in the Yorkshire Museum. Salve! Welcome to the harbour. It looks like chaos, but everything is in its proper place. We're filling that warehouse with amphorae of wine and Samian ware just arrived from Colonia Claudia and Augusta Trevororum. And that ship there is being loaded with grain, beef and jewellery destined for traders in Gaul. Things don't always go as smoothly as they're going today. Both this river and the ooze flood regularly, and we have to stop our work to try and protect our property from the rising waters. I am Lucius Viducius Placidus, of the Velio Cassis of Gaul, Negotiator Britannicianus. I arrange trade across the Oceanus Germanicus, between Britannia and the rest of the empire. Twenty years ago, I was only Placidus, son of Viduci, but now I am a full Roman citizen, with three names, rich enough to dedicate an archway in Ibaracum to Neptune and the genius of this place. May the goddess Fortuna look as kindly on you as she has on me. That fictional account of the harbour was inspired by Lucius's dedication slab, which can be seen in the Yorkshire Museum. <laughs>